Today's topic is inferior alveolar nerve block which is also known as mandibular block and it is the second most injection used in the mandible but it also have the highest percentage of clinical failure it is specially used for the quadrant dentistry and usually bilateral inferior alveolar nerve block it is rarely indicated in the dental treatment now the nerves it anesthetize are we have already seen in the video of trigeminal nerve the branches of inferior alveolar nerve Hence, this block it will anesthetize inferior alveolar nerve, as the name says. Then the branches of it, that is the incisive and the mental nerve, and also the lingual nerve. Now the areas that are anesthetized by this block are: first is it is going to block all the mandibular teeth of that same side to the midline. Then it is going to block body of the mandible, inferior portion of the ramus. Then the buccal mucoperiosteum. mucous membrane anterior to the mental foramen that is blocked by the mental nerve the branch of the inferior alveolar nerve then it is going to block anterior two third of the tongue and the floor of the oral cavity because of the lingual nerve then the lingual soft tissue and the periosteum due to again the lingual nerve now where all is it indicated so first indication is when there is procedure that you need to perform on multiple mandibular teeth then the buccal soft tissue anesthesia it is necessary or the lingual soft tissue anesthesia is necessary so during such procedure you need to go for this block now what all are the contraindication for this block so first is rarely it is contraindicated in infection or acute inflammation due to the ph which we have seen in the local anesthesia video the next contraindication is now the patient who are more likely to self inflict themselves like they can bite their lip or tongue due to lack of sensation like in very young child or mentally handicapped adult or the child now what is the advantage of this block so it provides wide area of anesthesia at once itself so that we have already seen that it blocks like all of the mandibular teeth at once of that same side the disadvantages are but now the advantage of this wide area of anesthesia can also be the disadvantage as it is not used for the localized procedure due to its wide area of anesthesia there are higher rate of inadequate anesthesia so it is having the rate of 31% to 81 percentage the landmarks they are not too much reliable hence it becomes very difficult to give this block next is highest of all the intraoral injections it has the highest rate of positive aspiration that is round about 10 to 15 percentage then the next disadvantage is it can be discomforting to many patient due to the lingual and the lower lip anesthesia and it can self inflict themselves and the last is the partial anesthesia is possible where there is a bifid inferior alveolar nerve present i think with the main part that is the technique so for this long needle it is recommended 25 gauge long needle it is preferred then the area of injection of the needle will be in the mucous membrane on the medial side of the ramus target area is the nerve itself that is the inferior alveolar nerve but before it enters into the mandibular foramen landmarks are so there are three major landmarks that is the coronoid notch which is the greatest concavity on the anterior border of the ramus pterygomandibular raphe and the occlusal plane of the mandibular posterior teeth moving towards the procedure how are you going to exactly give this block first is assume the correct position for the operator so it should be 8 o'clock for the right inferior alveolar nerve block and it should be at the 10 o'clock so the operator they should stand at 10 o'clock for the left inferior alveolar nerve block next is the patient's position so it should be supine or semi supine and the mouth it should be opened wide then you're going to prepare the tissue at the injection site so you're going to dry it with the gauze you're going to apply the topical antiseptic if required and then you're going to apply the topical anesthesia as the needle insertion will be less painful to the patient now you're going to place the syringe in the corner of the mouth somewhat near the premolars on the opposite side of the injection and you're going to locate where you should now penetrate the injection Now for this there are three parameters which are considered that is the height of injection is the first one so for this you are going to place your thumb or the index finger of the non dominant hand in the coronoid notch of the ramus that is your greatest concavity 
so it's like you're going to move your finger along the ramus and where you feel the greatest depth or that concavity you're going to place the finger and then an imaginary line from that to the pterygo mandibular raphe is going to be drawn which determines the height where this line should be and it should be parallel to the occlusal plane of the mandibular molar usually it lies 6 to 10 millimeters above the occlusal plane so the reason for placing the finger on the coronoid notch is it is used to pull the tissues laterally making them taut and it helps the needle insertion to be less traumatic so if possible you can also use a mouth mirror then placing your thumb or the finger to prevent accidental needle injury to the operator so this was about the first parameter like at what height it should be inserted now the next parameter is the anterior posterior side so the needle penetration it should occur at the intersection of two points now what are these two points so now imagine point one is on the horizontal line that we have seen in the height that is from the coronoid notch to the deepest part of the pterygo mandibular raphe the next point will be it is on the vertical plane through the point one which is about three fourth of the distance from the anterior border of the ramus now for example you have got your point on the horizontal line and then you're going to major round about like three fourth of your ramus and then you're going to intersect both the lines now to make it simple in the diagram you can see there's a horizontal line that is the one which is drawn from the coronoid notch to the pterygo mandibular raphe then you can see a vertical line where this line is drawn at the three fourth of the distance from the anterior ramus and that intersection is the anterior posterior distance that is your second parameter now the last third parameter it is the depth of penetration so we have seen at what height it should be then the distance that is your anterior posterior distance now last is how deep the needle should go to get the proper block because if we go wrong in any of this parameter you won't get proper outcome so hence third parameter is insert the needle till you hit the bone that is your mandible so the average depth in adults will be 20 to 25 millimeter it will be approximately two third to three fourth of the needle that will go in and then you will hit the bone but now it can be also a problem over here there can be two scenarios like if the bone it contacts too soon like not even the half of the needle it is inserted it means that it is located too far anteriorly on the ramus and for this what you need to do is you just need to withdraw the needle slightly but not completely and then move the syringe more towards the canine or the lateral incisor on the opposite side ideally what we do is on the opposite side it's near about the premolar but if the contact is too soon what you can do is you can like push the or you can place the syringe more anteriorly the second scenario is now if the bone it is not contacted even if the complete needle is inside your mucous membrane then it means that it is located to posteriorly so for this again you need to withdraw the needle slightly but not completely and then move the syringe towards the molars posteriorly now that all the three parameters they are considered the needle it is inserted and when properly the bone is contacted you're going to aspirate in two planes and if negative then you're going to slowly deposit 1.5 ml over 60 seconds but if the aspiration is positive that means you're directly hitting the vessels so you're going to discard that syringe and you're going to take a new one now the next step will be you're going to slowly withdraw the syringe and you're going to re-aspirate again if it is negative you're going to deposit 0.2 ml to anesthetize the lingual nerve now you're going to withdraw the syringe and put the needle cap for the safety and wait for three to five minutes before going for the testing of the block what are the signs and symptoms so subjective will be the patient will feel tingling or the numbness of the lower lip that was because of the mental nerve and also the numbness of the tongue of the same side that is because of the lingual nerve objective will be you can use freezing spray or electric pulp test with no response and there is no pain which is felt during treatment now what are the precautions that you need to take for this block do not deposit local anesthesia 
if the bone it is not contacted at the proper depth and if it is too deep as there are chances it is in the parotid gland near the facial nerve which can cause facial nerve paralysis so always make sure 3/4 of your needle is like inserted and then it is contacting the bone and avoid pain by not contacting the bone too forcefully or applying too much of pressure now if you are doing procedure on the incisor and the patient they are giving response pain response when you are doing the procedure it can be because of the cross innovation so in that case you can give infiltration to the patient near the incisor now lastly what are the complications so first can be hematoma that is the swelling of the tissues on the medial side of the mandibular ramus so in that case what you need to do is you can apply pressure to that area for 3 to 5 minutes so this complication is very rare with the inferior alveolar nerve block the next can be trismus so there will be slight degree of soreness when you are opening the mandible that is very common with this block so in that you can prescribe heat therapy warm saline rinses medication and physiotherapy and the last and the most commonly seen complication if the procedure is not done properly is the transient facial paralysis now if we deposit local anesthesia in the parotid gland that means your needle is not contacting the bone and complete needle is inside the mucous membrane that means you have entered the parotid gland near the facial nerve so signs will be inability to close the lower eyelid and there will be drooping of the upper lip of the affected side so in this the main thing is you need to reassure the patient that this will resolve and this is temporary and if the patient they are wearing contact lenses ask them to remove it and give eye patches so that was all about this block thank you so much